So we know from this graph that the scientists um, studying ozone concentrations over the Earth found that there was an imbalance, that ozone was being destroyed at a faster rate that it was being uh, formed over Antarctica, over the South Pole. This is showing that ozone concentration through the years that this is in 2008, the lower concentration of ozone. And this is not the entire year. This is only during the months uh, which are spring months in Antarctica or fall for us. That's September, October. It has to do with the southern hemisphere versus northern hemisphere. So the question is, why here? Why was there an ozone hole specifically over Antarctica, over the South Pole? Um, we know that we know that one factor is the chlorofluorocarbons, these CFCs. These are producing the reactive chlorines that break down ozone. So we know that reactive chlorines break down ozone. But where do those chlorofluorocarbons come from? Well, they're all over the, the world. They come from air conditioners. So they're all over the world. All over Earth, there are CFCs in the atmosphere. So that includes over us right now, wherever you're sitting, anywhere in the world, and over Antarctica because the air is shared all over in the atmosphere. So why over the South Pole? This graph shows, this summarizes everything on this one graph. So there's a lot on here. On the x-axis, let's start with its months. Okay, so this is May through October. And this is winter in Antarctica. Uh, in the southern hemisphere, our summer months, which are June, July, August, are their winter months. Okay, and so on the y-axis, are the temperatures in either degrees Celsius or in degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And the um, Fahrenheit is what I'm more used to, so I'll look at this, this side. So we know that those chlorine-free radicals come from chlorofluorocarbons. Those are all over Earth. Um, but even though they're all over Earth, they um, are not these reactions are not happening above your heads right now. Why not? Uh, because something is special about the South Pole. Um, down in Antarctica, it's the coldest spot on Earth. And we know that it's even colder than the North Pole. And we can see this on this graph that the blue line are temperatures and the um, temperatures going down to negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit down to negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica compared to down to about 110 negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the North Pole so we know that the South Pole Antarctica is the coldest spot Okay, and one thing about this very cold spot is that you have clouds that are made out of ice. So these are clouds called polar stratospheric clouds out of ice crystals. That's solid ice crystals, and this is in instead of clouds that would be made out of water droplets. So they're not normal clouds. Um, they look quite different, as you can see. They have a, a rainbow effect because that's what crystals do, like prisms. They split the light into component colors, and so it's much more dramatic of a sky when you have these polar stratospheric clouds that are made out of ice crystals. It's like having tons of prisms in the sky. So it is on the surface of these ice crystals that the reactions occur where chlorine breaks down ozone. So these chlorine reactions occur on the surface of ice crystals. OK, 
okay? And so that's number one. We know we need those chlorine-free radicals. That's all over Earth. But we don't have these clouds made out of ice all over Earth. We only have them in this coldest spot on Earth. And then one more thing to add is that those ice crystal clouds, those polar stratospheric clouds, are not around all year round. They're only around during the coldest um, portions of the year, which are winter in Antarctica. So this is the Antarctic winter, and this line in green shows the polar stratospheric clouds that form when it is lower than negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. So in Antarctica, we have polar stratospheric clouds the entire winter, okay? So these are all polar stratospheric clouds here, okay? So from May through October, there are PSCs, polar stratospheric clouds. Um, the Arctic also has some polar stratospheric clouds, but only for a short amount of time. There is a third component, though, which is UV energy. So remember that those reactions require UV energy to first break off the chlorine molecule from the CFCs in the first place. Okay, so these, you need UV, and in Antarctica, the sun doesn't, uh, we don't have the sun during the winter in Antarctica. So what happens is that once the winter um, starts to become spring, which in Antarctica is September and October, this is the spring, or remember our fall months, okay, spring in the southern hemisphere, you start to have the combination of all three things. You have the chlorine free radicals, those are all over Earth, you have the polar stratospheric clouds, this is only in the winter, but you also need the third, co third component, which is UV energy from the sun, and that is only gonna happen when you have all of those three things, that's the perfect storm, and that is in September and October when the sun comes out. So those reactions that happen, these reactions have the chlorine-free radical, you have this um, chlorine-free radical that came from UV, Okay, and then this is the destruction of ozone becoming not a bunch of different oxygen, not a bunch of different oxygen atoms, but just extra oxygen and less ozone. 